So he told Adam alayhi salam, these two things you will achieve. What happens to us? When we are sick, we first go to the doctor, mashallah. The doctor, mashallah, we make dua to Allah and we say, Ya Allah, cure me. Then we go to the doctor and then we get our medication and we start having it. A month passes, we're not getting better. Two months pass, we're not getting better. Now what happens? The same shaitan comes back and he says, He's telling you the same thing. Can I show you a different way? I want to show you there's another way you can get your health back. Let's go to the witch doctor. Let's go to the nanga. Let's go to the fortune teller. Let's go to someone who calls himself a big Maulana who can tell you exactly who did magic on you. Finished. What happened? We fall into the same trap. For what? For health and life. Allahu Akbar. Look at the exact trap that is used by the same Iblis against us who are the Khulafa of Adam alayhi salam. We came after him and he's using the same trap. The, the moral of what is being said is whenever we are sick, we pray to Allah. Very strong prayers. We can ask others to pray for us. There's no problem. We can visit the doctor. We can get medication. But we will not do anything that displeases Allah in order to achieve good health. Because come what may, we have to die whether today or tomorrow. And we are failing our test if we've done something that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anything that is disallowed, we are far away from that. And we need to be far away from that. That is what we learn. Another point that is learned. Sometimes our business is failing. We have a loss. Then it burns down. Then we happen to grow it up again. And then a robber comes. And then we happen to do something and the tax man comes. And we just failing one after the other. What do we say? We are not satisfied. We will go from one man to another. I think I've, I'm suffering bad luck here. So what should you do? He tells you, you, you need to take three bones and you need to put them in a certain Mercedes Benz sign. And then you need to take three lemons and put one in each compartment of that Mercedes Benz sign. And the, 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 the lemon needs to not weigh more than 80 grams. And then you need to squeeze each lemon with five drops coming out of the lemon. And then you need to take that juice together and take a little bit of saffron. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> By hearing this already, we need to know that that is Iblis. What is it? Let me tell you when you're sick and someone says, cut five lemons, go and get 10 roses. What is happening? Let me explain. It's very important for us to explain. Iblis is laughing at us and laughing at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all he's doing. He says, look, didn't I warn you that I'm going to lead these people to worship me when you tell them pray when you are sick and go and seek proper medication when you are sick and do that that you are allowed to do when you are sick. You watch. They're not going to listen to you. I'll tell them cut 80 lemons. They'll go and cut them. I'll tell them go. Astaghfirullah. I heard one man tell a certain woman that someone has done magic on you and it is someone from your own family. So it broke the whole family to pieces. How did they know? Did Jibreel come to them? If Jibreel didn't come to them, then Iblis came to them. Allahu Akbar. And when Iblis comes, he pretends he's a Muslim. He tells you, I'm a jinn. I'm a clean jinn. I'm a Muslim. I'm a Sahabi. I know the Prophet. He definitely knows everything. As we said here, let's learn the lesson from this. When Iblis comes, he comes in disguise. So those who think they control a jinn, if that jinn tells you it's a Muslim, it's not a Muslim. Because in the Sharia of the jinn, they are not allowed to come close to you as mankind. Ya ma'shar al jinni qad istakthartum min al ins. Allah says, Oh jinn kind, you've made enough fools out of these mankind. Enough of them. And in Surah Al Jinn, go and read it. Allah says, Wa annahu kana rijalum min al ins ya'udhun bi rijalim min al jinn. There are so many men from mankind who seek protection and goodness and cure from jinn kind, but it only increases them in becoming more and more astray and in greater misfortune and in more difficulty. That's what Surah Al Jinn tells us. So, are we allowed to seek the assistance of jinn? The answer is no. And this lesson is for those who claim to be owning jinn and to be having jinn. Believe me, if Iblis could lie to Adam alayhi salam, for him to lie to us is far more easy. Because Adam alayhi salam knew him. He saw him. He recognized him. He knew everything. And still he was gone. With us, we haven't even seen him. So let us not be fooled. There is no quick fix. Like when a person doesn't have wealth. 
He can either work very, very hard and have a salary. Every day he's earning a little bit and slowly but surely he becomes rich. That is the difficult way, but it is the permissible way and you are passing your test. Or he can choose to go and steal at night and go and rob and go and take this and that and go and engage in armed robbery. He, he will have a lot of wealth, but his life will be misery. He will live in constant fear of being caught and so on. What's the point? But he became rich and he stole from so many people. And then suddenly when that pyramid scheme crashes, everything comes to a halt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all understanding and goodness. The same way with health. When we are sick, you pray and you continue and you try the permissible means and you try from the Quran and the correct sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And thereafter the cure will come to you slowly but surely. But if you want a quick fix, you can go to the, the witch doctors and the others who will fix you overnight. But what did they do? They used Iblis who's laughing at you, laughing at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and saying, Ya Allah, look, I made fools of all these people. So we need to know, we need to understand. There is great detail. I don't have the time to go into exactly how it works, but it's quite simple. The spirits that we have with us, they are called spirits by the local African traditionalists, but we call them the Qurana, a Karin. Every person has an angel. And they have a devil, a jinn. The angel is ordering you to do good. The Qareen is ordering you to do bad. And you are the soul who, who allows one of the two to win. If you allow the good force to win, you become a good person. You allow the bad force to win, you become a bad person. When a person dies, his soul goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never to return. And his body decomposes into the earth unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills such as the bodies of the prophets Allah says in Allah harrama ala al ardi an ta'kula ajsad al anbiya that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited the earth from eating the bodies of the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so with those exceptions the rest of us the body actually will decompose back into the earth and what happens to the devil what happens to the angel it gets given a different task by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's gone and that devil, what happens to it? It roams around. Where? A lot of them roam in the graveyard. A lot of them come back pretending to us that the souls have come back. So some people believe, hey, the soul came back. And you know, on this day, the souls come back. No soul comes back. The soul goes to Barzakh. The soul goes to a different place altogether. It is this spirit, or should I say this Karin, that comes back. It tackles, it plays games, it does this. It knows history. It knows you better than yourself because it was with you since the time you were born. So it knows exactly what happened. Now what does it do? It starts playing a game. People start beckoning the spirits. In order to beckon the spirits, you need to do something silly. Very silly. You need to cut 80 lemons or you need to do something. Sometimes people instruct you to murder. Sometimes they ask you to bring a tongue of a human being. Sometimes they ask you to cut a dove. Sometimes they ask you to do any form of silly items which do not make sense at all. Then you, you get the strength. And you start, you can talk to your great grandfather and he'll talk to you in the voice you remember. Allahu Akbar. But that is all a joke and it is all unacceptable. It is possible. It can be done in the same way a robbery can happen. It is possible to engage in robbery, but the sin of it, it is sinful and it is not permissible. The same applies. This type of behavior is possible, but it is disallowed. And this is what we learn from Iblis. Iblis from the beginning he promised, I'm going to come to them. How? Remote control. I'm going to come to them in a way that I will disguise myself. Even the good from amongst them will not know the difference. So Allah says, Inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. My worshippers who are going to worship me, Allah says, over them you will have no power, no authority. May Allah make us from the true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.